welcome to another amazing episode of Popcorn Time. In the first episode, we've learned about the origin of the Android operating system and how it was ported to x86 architecture by various developers. We've also covered how some of the big tech companies, like Jide Technologies, saw a future in Android x86, but then ended up giving up on their various products. But in this episode, we'll be taking a deep dive into Android emulators like Bluestacks and Memu Player, and how these PC emulators are different from the Android x86 operating system. An Android emulator is a software that enables one computer system, called the host, to behave like another computer system, called the guest. An emulator typically enables the host system to run software or use peripheral devices designed for the guest system. Since at least the 1990s, many video game enthusiasts have used emulators to play classic arcade games from the 1980s using the game's original 1980s machine code and data, which is interpreted by a current era system to emulate the old video game consoles. In a theoretical sense, any operating system environment can be emulated within another environment. However, in practice, it can be quite difficult particularly when the exact behavior of the system to be emulated is not documented and has to be deduced through reverse engineering. It also says nothing about timing constraints. If the emulator does not perform as quickly as the original hardware, the emulated software may run much more slowly than it would have to on the original hardware, possibly triggering timer interrupts that alter the behavior. Emulators allow software exclusive to one system to be used on another. For example, a PlayStation 2 exclusive video game could be played on a PC using an emulator. This is especially useful when the original system is hard to obtain or incompatible with modern hardware. Android uses a Linux kernel to communicate with the hardware and manage processes on the system, but it uses an entirely different toolset from the standard Linux distros, and Google doesn't provide any official support to run it on x86 PCs. While Android can technically run some Linux binaries, doing so may require super user privileges that Android does not provide by default. While Android natively supports mouse pointer, most of the apps expect users to have a touchscreen, so some emulators, like Bluestacks, have built-in smart key mapping that can emulate both keyboard and mouse in any game you play on it. The Android Software Development Kit includes a comprehensive set of development tools for Android, which also includes an emulator based on QEMU which is a free and open source emulator and virtualizer that can perform hardware virtualization. The Android emulator provides almost all of the capabilities of a real Android device. You can simulate incoming phone calls and text messages, specify the location of the device, simulate different network speeds, simulate rotation and other hardware sensors, access the Google Play Store, and much more but this emulator is focused on productivity and development of Android apps. On October 11, 2011, Bluestacks, an American technology company, announced a public alpha version of the Bluestacks app player, which is an Android emulator designed to run Android apps and games on Windows and Mac OS. The company formed a partnership with Citrix System, which is an American multinational software company that provides virtualization software. Bluestacks has features like multi-window support for apps and a smart key mapping system for Android games that attracted many PC users who wanted to play mobile games on bigger screens, and features like these are focused on gamers, hence they cannot be found on typical Android SDK emulator. That's why Bluestacks also won the best of CES in 2012. On May 9th of 2013, 
Bluestacks announced a subscription-based service called GamePop. It allows users to play as many as 500 Android games on PC. And later on, Samsung announced that they invested in GamePop, and this deal brought $26 million of the investment in Bluestacks in 2014. And now some of the company investors include Samsung, Intel, Qualcomm, Citrix, AMD, and a few others. So, in short, for a company that's using free and open source Android x86 as a back end and Oracle VirtualBox as a front end, they've made a lot of money. On top of that, they've kept Bluestacks App Player closed source. That's why many people have doubts about it being safe to use on Windows. There's another emulator called Motion, which is focused on enterprise Android developers instead of gaming. Motion is pretty fast and has a lot of developer-friendly features like Linux OS support and USB cable emulation. But due to a rise in the Android gaming community, emulators with better key mapping and game support are rising in the market. Speaking of gaming, China is one of the largest mobile gaming industries and recently we've seen a rise in Chinese PC emulators which sometimes even outperform Bluestacks in terms of performance and game support. Some of these Chinese PC emulators that have gained a global fan base over the years are Mimu Player, Nox Player, LD Player, Mew Mew, and Game Loop. Mew Mew Player is an emulator developed by NetEase Incorporated, which is a Chinese PC and mobile game developer community. Tencent Gaming Buddy, now known as Game Loop, is developed by Tencent which is the largest video games publisher in the world. It has stake in two of the most popular Battle Royale style games, Fortnite and PUBG. It also owns the entire Valorant and League of Legends studio, Riot Games. In short, the Android emulator gaming market is doing great business while free and open source projects like Android x86 and Bliss OS are looking for open source developers and sponsorships to keep the project alive. With the rise of Battle Royale games like Free Fire and PUBG Mobile, using your fingers to control movement and gun recoil is very difficult. But gaming emulators like Bluestacks and Gamehoot can give you an advantage over mobile players. Therefore, to balance the game, developers started many new methods like separating mobile user lobby from the emulator user's lobby. But the use of cheats on the platform was not reducing, so they made another lobby separation between game loop users, and other third-party emulator users. And this move from Tencent pissed off many emulator players because the user base on third-party emulators was small, which increased the game matchmaking time, and you will mostly match with bots or cheaters. So they started using emulator bypass and hacks on third-party emulators to get to the mobile lobby, which ruined the game for many legit mobile players, and some of them even switched to different mobile games. Most of the games nowadays use Tencent's anti-cheat system in their games, which is developed in the native C language. Therefore, any framework level modification in the system can't bypass it. Therefore, emulators like Bluestacks, Nox Player, and LD Player use Android Bionic libraries and modify them from source code to bypass some anti-emulator checks by games. Android Bionic is a C library that is in direct contact with the Linux kernel and provides core features like memory allocation and system properties. Since all the native programs talk to the kernel via Android Bionic libraries, modifying and injecting application-specific code in them makes sense to bypass any anti-cheat solution made by gaming companies. This is one of the reasons people get banned in these popular emulators since gaming companies like Tencent continuously patch and fix their anti-cheat system. Although these PC emulators are pretty popular among gamers, some people like myself still don't trust them because they have many security issues. These emulators use outdated Android versions like 4.4 and 5.1 which have many critical vulnerabilities that a hacker can exploit and remotely hack your Google account or even gain root permissions of your emulator system. And if getting your Google account access is not enough, some of them also have a Windows background process that runs during Windows startup, and this process also has 
admin access so they can monitor every activity on your Windows system and even disable your antivirus or firewall software. All of these emulators are closed source, so you can't find out what they're doing with your data. And this is one of the reasons some antivirus companies like Bitdefender blocks these emulators from running or even installing in the system. So now let's talk about is all those applications are safe or not. Well, to be honest, most of those applications are safe. The reason is very simple because you have to think in, in business standpoint, if those applications have virus in them, most of the people are not going to use those applications and if there are not a good amount of users the company is not gonna last for very long and they have to shut the doors so that's the reason uh, for business standpoint and generally most of the android emulator doesn't have viruses But not all PC emulators are bad. Anbox is a free and open source Linux application, which not an emulator. Anbox is quite similar to Wine, but very different from any normal QEMU or VirtualBox based emulators. Anbox is a container based approach to boot a full Android system on a regular GNU slash Linux OS like Ubuntu. In other words, Anbox will let you run Android apps on your Linux system without the slowness of virtualization. The performance on Anbox is good, but Android x86 is still the king when it comes to performance. Long story short, it doesn't matter which PC emulator you choose. If you care about privacy, security, and pure performance on your old hardware, then Android x86 is the best solution out there. And I accept that there are issues on using Android x86 like poor support over NVIDIA GPU, Wi-Fi drivers, and most importantly, a better key mapping system to play games on it. But these things are not impossible to build, and Android x86 forks like Remix OS and Phoenix OS have shown us that with the help of a few experienced developers, you can do wonders on this small open source project. Our goal as part of this community is to bring more young, enthusiastic people who can contribute their time and skills to these projects. And you don't need to be a developer to help or can contribute to these projects. Just download these builds, test them on your hardware, then provide proper feedback is more than enough for a developer. There are many other community forums and Discord groups about Android x86 and Phoenix OS, and most of them lack basic knowledge about Android x86. So they either supply cheats for games, which they copied from other people or groups, and some of them even call themselves Android x86 developers for adding boot animations and wallpapers into Phoenix OS and Prime OS. They are just one of those copycats who spread fake news or create useless drama among the community. In upcoming episodes, I'll be doing a special video exposing each and every one of them, so make sure to subscribe for upcoming videos. And if you have any suggestions or ideas for future episodes, you can comment below and I would love to hear about your experience with these PC emulators. That's all for the second episode of Popcorn Time. I'm Ghostface, and I hope you've learned something new today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for the next episode.